Good morning everybody, welcome to a video. This morning I've been smoking this low from 1908. I made my own mixture uh, a couple of days ago. It was a mixture, 50-50 mixture of Pembroke and Irish Flake, which I called Ross Lair mixture, which is a play on, um, <coughs> of course, the ferry boat that goes to the island Irish village of Rosslair from uh, from Pembroke. I think it's still is it running? I think it's still running. So um, that was very nice. And today I'm testing out the Hobbit's weed that I made. Um, must have been a month or so ago now. To be honest, it's not quite there. Um, I can still taste the very cherry, which is dominant at the moment. Uh, but it's actually not far off. It's certainly better than what it was um, a week or so ago. I'm using this <coughs> multicoloured crazy tamper, which um, was a kind gift. It is a crazy temper as well. <laughs> so what have I been up to? Well, um, first of all, we've got some really sad news, to be honest. Um, many of you know Tim Lancaster, um, urban anchorite. Um, used to be Tim Gearing, if you were, uh, if you remember him from from uh, that time. His lovely dog. Um, Reg has sadly passed away on Monday and um, Reg's was a beautiful bull terrier I think he was probably about nine ten years old maybe and um, he was a lovely old boy and uh, I can imagine the void that um, his passings left on Tim so if you are friends with um, Tim please uh, you know, drop him a message, and to, just to say you're thinking of him. Uh, he's a he's a lovely guy and a good friend. And um, it's always hard when you lose an animal, and um, it doesn't matter the size of the animal either, because I've I've been through this. Um, when we lost the rabbit, <coughs> uh, my son's rabbit, the immediate reaction was, "Well, just get another one." But it's not about that at all, is it? It's about the bond you have with the animal. And, um, I mean, for Tim, it's absolutely devastating. He's a huge part of um, the family. Um, so, yeah, just reach out to Tim. Send him a message if you can, just to say you're thinking of him. And, um, yeah, dear old Regis, what a lovely, lovely dog. Um, little bull terrier, uh, black and white with a white circle, looked like a, a Frisian cow. <laughs> Uh, lovely fond memories of him, um, and I just hope Tim's going to be okay. Um, in other news, uh, yeah, that's really nice. That's really nice now. Um, just the slight taste of the very cherry is slightly overpowering, but give it a month, then that will be there, definitely. If anyone made Hobbit Swede with me, then leave it another month. Um, and, and we'll be there by the summer. Um, Cornell and Deal, who, um, you know, they're good manufacturer of tobaccos, not all of them I like, admittedly, came out with the um, the small batch, the San Sepulcro, San Sepulcro um, small batch, which is a uh, mixture of Red Virginias, Italian dark fired leaf um, that could mean anything but it's it's Kentucky and a little bit of black Cavendish <clears throat> now the last one they produced was excellent I bought um, a tin of that to try and liked it I bought last year the small batch Red Virginia which was excellent as well um, I think the mistake people make with these ones 
they smoke them immediately and uh, I think this especially is going to need a little bit of time in the cellar um, and I'm sure in you know three four years time you bring it out it will be a really very very nice smoke um, someone said to me about um, the mould issue that C and D have had over the uh, over the years now, and they had a um, hmm. they had a tin of Briar Fox um, go mouldy. It's very hard, isn't it, with tobacco? And um, yeah, it's an organic material that's evolving when packaged, if you like. You can put all the moisture, um, you can lower the moisture, you can up the preservatives, you can do all of that, and sometimes you still get mould. Um, just one of those things, I guess. But I would be very upset if um, the Santipolcro suffers from mould as well. I know it's put a lot of people off buying it. So tobacco pipes, they came out with it first, which was quite clever of them. I don't believe they had it in stock at all. I believe they just thought, right, let's put ours uh, for sale first, which they did. Everyone else's came in the next day. So as soon as it came in, they put theirs up, but tobacco pipes had a good 24 hours on them. So um, I usually buy uh, American style tobaccos like uh, C&D and things like that from Cup of Joe's. But um, tobacco pipes popped up with it. And I sometimes miss out on these things and kick myself for not buying it when I see it. So I am... Um, so I bought mine from um, tobacco pipes. Just six tins. Um, two to smoke. Um four in the cellar and um, we'll see how we get on with that so this morning arrived and this is going to be my summer project I've been wanting to do this for ages I've got this huge great press which I'm going to show you it's not huge but that is a six ton tobacco press well it's not for tobacco really it's for car parts and things like that um, and I love pressing tobacco and making my own uh, mixtures and things like that and um, what I want to do is actually make a really nice plug so today arrived this it's a steel square there it is. I know a lot of people have been using noodle presses and things like that, but at about two, three tons of pressure, my press would break a noodle press or things like that. A noodle press just doesn't press it hard enough um, for a plug. It's fine for a crumble cake and things like that, but you need to get up serious pressure for a for a plug. So I've got that size, which is plug size. It's what one, two, three, three inches, maybe. Um, no, it is three inches. I know it is three inches. Um, thirty millimeters. Thirty. Anyway, I measured it up, and it's the right plug size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. <clears throat> this piece of wood down to little squares that fit inside here. And I'll put one on the bottom here. I'm going to put my tobacco in on top, and then I'm going to put my other square of wood on top of that, maybe with a little piece of metal or a coin on top of that. And then I'm going to press it down as tight as I can possibly get it. So 50 grams should, I guess, compact to about that much. We shall see. 
<laughs> it's going to be an experiment, guys. And um, I think this is the, this is the the thing to do it because it's steel. It's not going to pop open. My previous template I had popped open. Um, have I got it round? No, no. Um, that kept breaking. Um, I think even with a noodle press with my six ton press pushing it down would break. Um, so, you know, 1.5 millimeter thick steel square should be, um, should be adequate. We'll have to see. So that's going to be my summer project. So what I'm going to do later on, I'm going to you know, measure it up and cut them to a perfect square and uh, I'm going to do a few of them. And then, um, I was thinking actually of making Hobbit's plug, which might be interesting, um, but we'll have to see. So that's what I'm up to, guys. Um, if anyone hasn't ordered the Esoterica Club pipe, I think it's too late now, but you can go on Cup of Joe's and see if you can still get it. That's going to be a beautiful pipe. Um, I'm still waiting on... Um, Mike at Blake Mile Briars, he's fixing up my Dagna, which uh, was a disaster. I think I talked about that before. I'm still waiting on that. That should be coming hopefully in the next couple of months. And then, yeah, when I get the San Sepulcro through from Tobacco Pipes, I'll make another video, I would have thought, um, and my first impressions of that. So that's it, really. Thanks for watching. And if you can, if you know Tim, send him a little message. Um, just to say you're thinking of him. I'm very much thinking of him today. All the best. And thanks to uh, all my new subscribers and for your messages and things. I will get back to people who have sent me a message. And um, have a great day. Cheers.